The standard bike, transportation, fitness, and fun in one package. Add to that an electric motor and a battery and you get the modern e-bike. The concept of a motorized bike, though, it goes way back. And when most people think motorized bike, they think moped, like 70s and early 80s mopeds. Ironically, one popular segment of modern e-bikes is e-moped style. I have an affinity for mopeds and scooters, Vespa style, so naturally combine e-bike with moped styling and my attention is piqued. Today I'm going to show you a bike that is not only e-moped style, but also blurs the lines between moped style and another segment of e-bike, the utility bike. This is the Fucare Gemini X, and right away you can see all of what I just mentioned. It's an e-bike and part utility bike and definitely part moped. Not only does the Gemini X have the moped looks that I like, it also has other features that are definitely popular with e-bike shoppers, like 20-inch fat tires, the dual batteries, and this thing. Which isn't what you think, and we'll be coming back to this, but the Gemini X definitely has the look. A look that's going to attract attention. There's a lot to unpack here, lots of features on a bike that literally shows them all to you because of the exposed tube design. E-bike, e-bike moped style, part by part, let's dig right into this bike, starting with the handlebars, which definitely have moped vibes with their high rise. I just saw a 1970s moped with bars practically identical to this. The difference here, it's a modern bike, so it's decked out with modern features. Like the lock-on comfort grips, these look silky smooth and they feel silky smooth. A sign of quality rubber. An e-moped needs a throttle, there is one here. On the right side, it's a thumb throttle. Beside that, the shifter, one of the few cheap components on the Gemini X. This is the Mickey Mouse Shimano shifter, a popular choice for many e-bike manufacturers for some reason. Other than they work, I don't know why so many use them. But where Fouquet saved money on the shifter, they spent on the center-mounted display. It's better than average, a full-color screen, 5.3 inches. It's controlled via a pad on the left side of the bars, all control elements a thumb length away. Under that, a bell, and I used to rip these standard looking bells, but then I realized that bells are like mouse traps. You don't need to get too fancy. E-bikes, especially these moped style e-bikes, are heavy, and stopping that weight is critical, so I like to see that they equipped this with hydraulic brakes. I've had positive experience with Logan branded brakes, and these include the ever important motor shutoff switch. I sometimes see standard bike caliber parts on e-mopeds, but not here. Robust is the word that comes to mind when looking at these components. Many are etched with the Fucare logo, and it's a very cool looking logo on a very cool looking frame, which we'll look at in more detail shortly. But first, some comfort items like this suspension fork, which has a manual lockout, ample travel for street riding, and the front wheel, it's a quick release. A funny thing about that, if there's one time that a bike could get away with bolt-on front wheels and no one would give it a second look, it would be on an e-moped. The fork arch, also the mount point for the bike's headlight, which we'll see shortly, and the front fender. A fender that mounts via a single bolt, meaning some back flex. We'll see how this does once I get it out on the road. And gripping on that road is going to be these Innova branded tires. Now you know I like my 20 inch fatties. These though, not the usual 20 by 4 knobbies. These look a lot like my scooter's tires with their street tread. And extra bonus, not 20 by 4.0, but 20 by 4 and a quarter. Mounted, of course, to wide rims. The hubs on this bike, there is a rubber seal, and they're Fucare branded, hopefully made for smooth rolling. Moving from the tires to the rear, we get to the drivetrain, the front half of it, and this, what looks like a boxy mid-drive, but it is not. This is the housing for the speed controller and the battery controller. Basic specs for the front half of this drivetrain kick off with alloy pedals with built-in reflectors, Pro wheel crank arms, 170 millimeters, a single chainring. It's a 42 tooth large chainring, though doesn't look that large in front of the big box. Which at first I thought was a curious design choice, and then I realized with this tube frame design, where else are you going to put the electronics? Plus, the uniqueness of it has kind of grown on me. Now, if the electronics are up here and it's not a mid drive, that means, yep, the power comes from the rear of the drivetrain which kicks off with a basic tourney derailleur on an e-bike. These just don't have to do much. At least there's a replaceable derailleur hanger for this aluminum frame. The bike gets it seven speeds via the Shimano branded freewheel. All trivial though, because the focus here goes to the Fucare branded rear hub motor. A 750 watt hub motor, 960 peak with major torque and it's powered by dual batteries that we'll see in a second. First, wrapping all of this, a plastic fender that matches the front fender and the included rear rack. Pannier friendly, top mount points, robust is the word that comes to mind. 
and the specs back that up. A max payload rating of 110 pounds. It's also the mount point for the bike's tail light. Now 110 pounds, impressive. The bike overall max payload, also impressive, 400 pounds. That's thanks both to the power output and the strong tubing of the 6061 aluminum frame. The color, titanium. And as you can see, because there's nowhere to hide them, this is a dual battery e-bike. 48 volts and 10.4 amp hours each, but these are load balanced, so they work together equaling 20.8 amp hours. That's 998.4 watt hours of power, which on paper gives this bike a stated range of 40 to 55 miles using throttle only 60 to 80 miles in pedal assist. And even with this exposed frame design, somehow all the wires are well hidden, the few that are visible, cleanly routed. Water resistance rating IPX5. Hub drive motor, that means this needs a cadence sensor. The closest I can figure, it's hidden right here, right behind that bulge. Kickstand, chainstay mounted, hydraulic brakes, wheel mounted. On a serious note, the rotors, they're 160 millimeters front and rear. One major side effect of moped styling is that the bikes are wider and they usually have a fixed seat, which means fixed seat height. The Gemini X is different. It has an adjustable seat post and a traditional saddle, a brown saddle, the only brown on the bike. And I would have thought that having a quick release seat post, an adjustable seat post, a non-fixed saddle on an e-moped would ruin the bike's aesthetic, but... On this Gemini X, it really doesn't. That's because of all the tubes, it's not a traditional e-moped. Exposed and robust, yet clean lines and a moped look at the same time. And here's where it really sets itself apart, because these moped-style e-bikes, they're not all that great for pedaling. Because of their wide frames and pedal position relative to seat height, usually not ideal, on the Gemini X, it is comfortable to pedal. Can I run it out of pedal? Absolutely. It is a cadence sensor equipped e-bike, so you just kind of pick your pace. Though resistance is good up to about 22 miles per hour. Beyond that, the bike is doing all the work and you're just there for the ride. Unless you want to pedal like crazy to try and reach the resistance point. Cadence sensor on and off, this is the usual one full revolution to engage the motor after that, one half revolution to turn it back on. Shut off latency less than one second in most cases. If you are someone that likes to work through the gears regularly or you ride steep hills where you actually need the gears out of the box, smooth shifting through all seven speeds. Front suspension. For street riding, it definitely smooths out the experience, and that's on top of the cushioning provided by the fat tires. It's smooth enough for some off-the-path riding if you need to cut through a yard or two between streets. Performance. Can this bike reach 28 miles per hour? Yes, easily, and it can hold it. The five pedal assist modes will range in speeds from 8 miles per hour up to 28. And on the bike that I have, throttle only, I can hit 28 there too. Performance on hills. Fucare rates this bike as being capable of climbing up to 30 degree inclines. On one of the steeper long hills in town, I think I hit a record, I'll have to go back, but 19 miles per hour up the hill, that's in pedal assist. When I stopped the bike and went with throttle only, I was still able to get 12 miles per hour. For usual street riding, this is a wide and heavy bike, yet it's somehow very nimble, at least around city sidewalks, which, yes, I can do in my city. In this aspect of riding, it handles less like the e-moped it's supposed to be, and more like a mix of a regular bike and a dirt bike. And I mean dirt bike, motorcycle bike. Being stable at low speeds, but also easy to dart around with plenty of extra power. High speeds, no problem. Low speeds, no problem. Agile, another word that comes to mind. And a Vespa term, flickable, which is a good thing. The headlight, I told you we would come back to that very bright day and night. The tail light visible in daylight too, and it's also a functional brake light. This 5.3 inch color display, decently vivid colors, a fancy layout, but still easy to control. Up arrows for the 5, pedal assist mode 6 if you count 0, which is you doing all the work. The control pad also has a dedicated button for the headlight. The info button cycles through the usual odometer, trip, max and average speeds, and so on. There's also a pace button if you need to push the bike, but I don't use that. And with the exception of noon, this is easily visible even in direct sunlight. And that's the nitty gritty, the bike from top to bottom. Let me tell you my likes after riding it for a bit. Obviously the moped styling, not for everyone, but this appeals to me. Well, partial moped styling because it also has utility bike styling, which is another segment that appeals to me, so double win. Another plus, this rides more like a traditional e-bike than any other e-moped style bike that I've ridden. And I'll put this in the likes because I was worried about that fender flex. It doesn't make a peep when riding down the road, so like.
The rear rack, even though I haven't put it to use, I like the idea that I could put 110 pounds back here. Load balanced battery draw that 20.8 amp hours of available juice. I was able to get about 30 miles with throttle only, and that's including some hills. In pedal assist, as long as you don't stay in pedal assist, 550 plus miles, definitely achievable. And put an asterisk here because I want to come back to this and the bike's range. A major like fitment adjustability, the ability to adjust the seat post height not seen on moped style e-bikes, and I think that's going to be a big draw for the Gemini X. The load balancing on these batteries, which gives it its great range, and an undocumented perk, the glove stash. And other features that make it a pleasurable bike for me. The suspension fork. The fat tires. You know I love my fat tires. The 750 watt hub motor that relays power well to the pavement. Areas for improvement while I like the hydraulic brakes and they stopped the bike just fine. I would have liked to have seen 180 millimeter rotors. And that's really about it. I mean, I could maybe pick at them shortening the full care name to Foo Care for some reason, but I haven't had anyone say anything about the name, but I have had them say a lot about the bike. It's very popular and unique enough that it definitely gets attention. So if you like unique bikes, maybe the Gemini X is for you. I'm going to close out this video with some screenshots from the Foo Care website because the information they provide is very good and their assembly video, it's spectacular. Their fitment info, I believe, dead on. The weight they mention, 80.5 pounds, which it is. I said this is heavy, not so noticeable while riding, but if you need to lift this up steps, you're going to notice. All the other specs, accurate 220.8 amp hour, that's 10.4 times two, remember it's load balanced. The controller, a 20 amp, 28 mile per hour top speed, confirmed and easy to reach as I showed even at throttle. The torque, this is a powerful bike. And how about that 110 pound capacity on the rear rack? 400 pound max payload. I said I would come back to the range specs because I didn't reach these claims, though I am happy with the ranges that I've been able to achieve. But I started thinking about these and I started looking at their website and I noticed that they sell something. A few accessories, as a matter of fact. Extra rack, so if you wondered where you would put that 110 pounds, here you go. And also a set of panniers, but more importantly, there are upgraded batteries available for the Gemini X. 15 amp hour batteries. Two of those brings this up to 30 amps total and definitely within the range specs that they claim. But I'm very happy with it as is the performance and the ranges and the price. $18.99. Putting it among the cheapest of dual battery e-bikes and that's over 20 amp hours of battery capacity. I'm impressed with both the quality and the performance of the Gemini X. Also want to mention I'm not sponsored. Everything you've seen and heard is my experience and my opinions, and now I want to hear your opinions on the Gemini X. So comment below, also thumbs up this video, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching Kev Central. Have a great day.